Welcome, Mensa Bay here, also known as Agent M Bay, and today inside of Agency Art Studios, I'll be doing a figurative drawing demonstration. So I'll be reviewing a different uh, techniques that I use when creating a work of art, uh, and also giving insights on how I choose to render my uh, surrealist aspects of my work. Uh, I have an example behind me of a drawing I did in 2018 uh, using Crafty Crayon. But today I'll be using graphite uh, from your 2H or 4H all the way up to your soft B pencils and even the ebony uh, to give the darker values. Um, the image that I'll be referencing, drawing is right here. And I'll also be working from my phone and my computer uh, as my references, so as opposed to having a printed image. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. All right, welcome back. Uh, so we have here uh, our drawing paper. Um, and one of the first things that I'd like to do is to kind of get a sense of where the figure is going to be. Um, one of the things is, you know, I generally start from the shoulders of my figures. Uh, two techniques that I apply kind of simultaneously is uh, using shapes to develop um, the different parts of the body. Uh, the other technique I use is plumbing. Um, and plumbing is a, kind of a uh, eyesight tool that you use. Um, it's kind of like gritting. Uh, you kind of just use your eyes to line up what it is that is uh, lined up with each other. And so you might have a shoulder and a knee that are aligned, a hand and a shoulder that might be aligned. And so it's just using your eyes and continuously moving throughout the reference image and determining where things line up. Here's an example of this. And that's kind of like what the eye is doing over and over, trying to figure out uh, what parts of the body uh, are where uh, without having to look at a grid or a... Uh, so it, it's a good tool for when you're doing live drawing. So you're just looking at the figure and lining things up. Uh, you can use your pencil to, do, to check yourself and doing things like lining it up with the figure. And um, I'm using a really light pencil, so you might not be able to, again, see everything, but when I get to my darker pencil, and make some more definite uh, or defining lines, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm just gonna get right back into it and try to get the rest of the body in and I'll check you on the other side. So I started this drawing in with 4-H pencil, doing very gestural shapes. And uh, once I got the body down and the figure worked out and kind of working on my lines and uh, deciding which part I wanted to, uh, which line I wanted to use, I went in with my 2-H pencil and I can kind of darken some of these values so that you guys can see it uh, and so that I can see better and finding which lines I want to go back and, and use when I go in for the next step as far as defining different parts. And so. Um, what this brings into account uh, is uh, the idea of again using using a device uh, because what this allows you to do that you can't do in person is you can zoom in and you can see details of things that you uh, want to focus on. So I can zoom in and decide that I want to really focus on the hand, and so I can go in and look at that part and work on that section when I'm ready to work on the fingers and those shapes there. Um, or if I want to go in here and capture the values and really see where the shadows are laying at. Uh, so I can use the, a device for that. You can do the same thing on a computer. So it allows you to zoom in and see things uh, that you can't see when you're stuck with the same size image other than like holding it close to your face. So I'm going to get back into this and start working on a few other things. Uh, once I get around to shading and adding value, I'll get right back to you guys. So let me go ahead and define some more areas and really get the figure where I want it to be, and I'll bring it right back.
Uh, so I've gone back in with my two B pencil, more gestural lines, um, and made a lot of adjustments. So uh, like down here, when I originally drew the leg, uh, I had this knee, looks like about down here, so I had the foot coming off a lot earlier. Uh, so when I went back and plumbed my lines and double checked where I had things lined up, I realized that you know this leg, or this pant leg, sat up higher than this one. And so I went back and adjusted it as I moved around the, uh, the image. And now I've gone in and started outlining some of the values and shades. And I can say, like, once I was in on it, it looked more differently. But when I step back, I really enjoy what's happening here. Uh, and so um, I'm a very gestural artist. as uh, So and my lines are always very loose and expressive. Um, and so uh, from this phase on, I would start to figure out where I was going to place the neck because that's going to affect shadowing shadows as well. I tend to try to take take a take a uh, good observation of how the light is is in the original photo or image, and then when I add my elongated uh, necks, I tend to try to make sure that wherever it is overlapping or under something that the shadows around it are creating the same effect or have the same type of lighting, so that it has the same effect. And so uh, as I mapped out some of the, the shadows and where things would be, now I'm going to go in and place the head wherever I think it will be the best compositionally.